That is the question that will be answered in men's event number six, the Speed Clean and Jerk Ladder. Welcome back to the Coliseum for the second time this weekend at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Brandon Domain, Rob Orlando, Mike Arsenault with you in what is going to be quick and just a very, very cool event. Well, Brandon, individual event number six is the Speed Clean and Jerk Ladder in our quarterfinal round right here we're going to do 245 pounds up to 275 pounds five barbells and you've got one minute to clean and jerk each bar unlike what we saw in a similar format last year it's not win and in it's the top 20 times advanced no matter what heat here in heat number one a field of four marquan jones in lane number one con porter lane two brandon luckett in lane three pablo chalfoon in lane number four luckett the lowest max listed clean and jerk in this heat but he is coming off some momentum with an eighth place finish earlier today And the race to the round of 20 is underway with these five opening lifts in the first round. It's Jones on the left, Porter in the second lane, Luckett, and then Chalfoon going left to right a moment ago. All four athletes already through the 255-pound bar, making their way to 265. It's synchronization for the three on the left, uh, right side of the screen. Jones not far behind as they get to bar number four of five. Chalfoon with a slight lead. He's going to advance to the final bar, and the man that was an alternate in the Latin America Regional went on to win and make his way to the games. He's going to get a no rep on the final lift, and that's going to give it to Marquan Jones on the top lane. Jones in at 39.92, Luck at 42.04, Con Porter in at 46.36, and how costly is it a single no rep in this event? As Shalfoon went from leading the way and looking like he would be in a good spot for the top 20, and it is unlikely he will advance at this point. And Brandon, what a costly mistake for Shalfoon. He was ripping through the barbells, one, two, three, and four, and then we get to bar number five. And what we talked about, you and I, in the warm-ups here was to avoid the no reps. You've got to make sure you get completely locked out and you're still before you drop that barbell. The judge gives the no rep, costly mistake, and Marquan Jones ends up capitalizing, finishing that fifth bar in just 39 seconds. So 39 will be the time to beat. Keep in mind, it's the top 20 times that advance. So Jones is not locked in. It is not a win in advance format, but he does have a good position coming out of our opening heat. So 39.92 seconds for Marquan Jones, the top time as we get ready for our second heat. It'll be four from the U.S. Mitchell Stevenson, lane one. Ethan Helbig, lane two. Saxon Panchik, lane three. And the lone non-rookie in the field of four will be Tim Paulson, one of the strongest men in the field. He'll be in the fourth lane. These guys have clean and jerks that we're looking at on the sheet here posted between 351 pounds and 365 pounds. I think this first round will be a breeze. But we have seen how strength isn't just what you need here. You also got to be consistent. You got to be accurate in this event. One mistake can cost you. This was just put on display in our opening heat. Still a few seconds away, again, 39.92 seconds. Time to beat, set by Marquand Jones. And away we go with our second of eight heats. All four athletes good at the opening bar of 245, moving on to 255. It'll be Tim Paulson just ahead of that man, Saxon Panchik. Ethan Helbig in third, Mitchell Stevenson on the top lane in fourth. Paulson on the near side of the screen in dark blue, leading Saxon Panchik in the white shirt. One lane above him, but they are near neck and neck as they advance to the 275-pound bar. The fifth and final bar in the way. Paulson gets the lockout. He'll make his way up onto the platform with a new top time at 31 seconds. Saxon Panchik in just behind at 33.3. Mitchell Stevenson unable to get the extension in the lockout and that'll give Ethan Helbig the third fastest time in the heat 
He'll begin at 48.51. Mitchell Stevenson taking another shot at it, unable to lock it out. And for the second straight heat, we'll only have three of the four athletes able to beat the one-minute time cap. No surprise there out of that one that Tim Paulson has the new top time to beat, 31.88 seconds. And Brandon, we called it when we were looking at the stat sheets going into this thing. We knew Tim Paulson was going to, out on the lower right corner, you can see him flying through these barbells, catching it through the shoulders, using the down to throw the bar back up, not even waiting to set himself. All five bars in just 31 seconds. You can see the full field of four, how they made their way through these five bars, the first five of 15, if they can advance all the way to the finals. And it was Paulson and Saxon Panchik. Give him some credit as well. As Paulson with the top time at 31.88, but less than a second and a half behind him was Saxon, who actually had the lowest listed queen and jerk max out of these four. But we move on to our next grouping, and this will be our first time seeing a full field of five. It'll be Jared Enderton, and keep an eye on that man in lane number one. Royce Dunn, another of the super strong athletes in lane two. Josh Bridges in the middle lane. Alex Anderson, another ultra strong competitor in lane four. John Colty in lane number five. But Jared Enderton, we're looking at unbelievable strength strongman competitor at one point in his life he was over 300 pounds body weight now he's at 195 he's got a list of clean and jerk of 385 pounds he's no stranger to putting things over his head i expect him to do really well on this first round this is very smart of him right now making sure with his judge not just a judge in general but his specific judge what that judge is looking for the man that won CrossFit total, Royce Dunn, is one lane over from him, so we know he can lift powerful and slow. Let's see if he can move fast as well. And here we go, full field of five. It'll be Enderton in lane number one on the top, and Colty in lane number five on the bottom of the screen a moment ago. Enderton quickly through the first two bars. He's got a big lead early on, already to the third bar, but he had a hitch as he lost his grip a little bit. That opens the window for Dunn, also for Anderson and Colty, but it's Anderson, Enderton still out in front through the 270-pound bar. One bar remains. This might be a new quick time of the day. Struggles to get out of that power clean, but he does. Top time will stand, but Enderton with a very quick time at 34.21. Colty in at 35.18. Anderson 36.38. Dunn 39.91. And Josh Bridges is the lone man left on the floor. Keep in mind, everybody that does not advance, their score or time will be how they rank. That rep did count just before the time cap. And that could be a big lift if anybody else is struggling in this opening round. But Brandon, on the quarterfinals, Jared, uh, sorry, in the men's quarterfinals, Jared Enderton, left side of the screen, he went berserk on these opening barbells, clean and throwing it right over his head. You can see he catches the bar onto the shoulders. He uses the down movement to throw the bar right back to the top. It was on his third barbell, had a little bit of a bobble on the clean. I'm pretty sure that cost him the best time overall so far because it was at least a two or three second hitch. But on bars number four and five, he made up for it and he walks away with the heat win. This time about two seconds slower than the current top time, which will still be 31.88 seconds by Tim Paulson. But Enderton looking like he will be in a good position to advance in the top 20. But there are still several athletes left as we get ready for heat number four. Again, a full field of five. Sean Sweeney, lane one. Zeke Grove, lane number two. Elliot Simmons, lane three. Fred Kenny, lane four. And Cody Anderson in lane number five. And when we saw the speed clean ladder in 2014, it was Cody Anderson that had the show-stealing moment when he had that clean at double body weight that had that iconic moment of that, out of that game. And we're super excited to watch Cody Anderson go through this. He seems to be a, a crowd favorite because he's at 170 pounds. He is way outside his body weight on these barbells. But pound for pound, you could make the case. He might be one of the strongest athletes in the field, but again, that being pound for pound. He also put together 28 unbroken muscle-ups on day one. 
Speaking of crowd favorites, there's the CrossFit Cowboys, Sean Sweeney, always having a good time out there. Easy there, Zeke. Stand by. And here we go with heat number four. Again, 31-88, the time to beat for the top time. All you need is a top 20 to advance. All five athletes through bar number one, advancing to bar two. Sweeney in lane one on the top side of the screen a moment ago. Greg Kenny leading the way just ahead of Anderson and Grove. So it's Kenny and then two of the four lightest athletes in the field joining him in the top three. Kenny continuing to lead the way as Grove trips over the bar in the blue shirt. Kenny in lane number four will try to hold up Cody Anderson and he will as he goes over the bar up onto the platform right at the 34th second mark. 34-32 for Craig Kenny, 35-37 for Anderson, 37-24 for Grove. Sean Sweeney will come across the platform with the <laughs> With some style points, that doesn't reduce your time, but it does give you a little bit more social media followers at 50.92. And Elliot Simmons will be, once again, we got another heat with one athlete unable to finish. And as we pointed out with Josh Bridges, every rep counts when it comes to your score. But Craig Kenny with one of the fastest times thus far at 34-32. Brandon, we're looking at five boxes across. You can see each athlete coming through with the fourth box from the left, first from the right. We can see Craig Kenny making easy work. He was the smoothest through all five barbells. Zeke Grove, second box from the left. He had a little bit of a bobble in the middle. Had to take a couple seconds to regroup. But Craig Kenny made all five barbells in 34 seconds. That puts him in a great position for the next round. How about Tim Paulson? His time still stands, 31.88. We've seen several times come within a couple seconds of that, but still nobody able to take him down. He might be the number one seed going into our top 20 as we pass the halfway point in the field. As it's Kenny and Anderson that look like they'll be in pretty good shape. Grove might be on the bubble uh, moving forward as we're ready for heat number five. Scott Panchik, lane one. Ben Smith, lane two. Nick Duranker, lane three. Dean Linder, Leighton, lane four. Alex Smith, lane five. Out of all the heats we're going to have in this one, this might be the show stealer in heat number five. Alex. Brandon, I'm looking down the list here. 365, 342, 396, 370, and 370. Nick Duranker has a 396-pound posted clean and jerk. These barbells will fly overhead. Speaking of heavy lifters, Ben Smith, the 2015 champ, one of four athletes at 370 or higher. And we know how we know how quickly he can move through these barbells. And Alex Smith, same thing. So strong, both of them. Stand by. Scott Panchik on the top, lane one. Alex Smith on the bottom in lane number five. As we move through the first bar very, very quickly. That time of 31.88 may be in jeopardy for the top time. Advancing into the second round. On to bar number three for all five athletes within a second of each other. It's going to be Panchik and Urankar just in line with each other, barely ahead of Smith and Linder Layton. Panchik continuing to hold off your car as Ben Smith is closing in. Panchik on the very top lane, gets the lockout, comes up onto the platform. That's going to be close for maybe the top time. Ben Smith in a less than a second behind. Your car and Alex Smith right there as well. Linder Layton will come across to the 42nd mark, and it's going to be 32-20 for Scott Panchik, 33-29 for Ben Smith, 35 seconds for both your car and Alex Smith. Wow. <laughs> kind of speechless after that one. But Brandon, we could see right from the start, Scott Panchik, if we're looking at the, the box bottom left screen, every single lift was exactly the same. And he's not a, a super tall athlete, so the barbell doesn't have to go all that far at five foot eight. He's quick to throw the bar onto the shoulders and rip it off the ground up to his up over his head. His pacing was just a fraction of a second quicker than your if you're looking at the middle screen on the bottom. And that gives him the heat win at 32 seconds. Less than a half second behind the top time. 
in the first four heats was Panchik. So 31.88 continues to be the leading time. And at this point, Tim Paulson might be feeling very, very safe at having a spot in our final 20 that will advance through the semifinals. As we're ready for heat number six, it'll be Logan Collins in lane number one, Rogelio Gamboa in lane two, Frederick Agidius in lane three, Noah Olson, who's continuing his charge up the leaderboard in lane four, and Rasmus Anderson in lane number five. The athletes taking the floor, and this is going to be an interesting heat. We had that heavy hitter one in heat five. This one, a little bit of a mixed bag in heat six. Kind of all over the place, Brandon, but we're looking at Rasmus Anderson. He, he's super strong, but at 340, it sounds crazy to say, but at 340 pounds, he's the lightest lifter in the group. And Noah Olsen with a posted clean and jerk of 355. What a great supporter and a great crossfitter. He hung out on the floor at the marathon row and made sure that all the ladies had his support. He stayed there till the last one was done. Stand by. These five might need to be perfect if they want to find themselves into the top 20. It's Noah Olsen breaking from the first bar just ahead of Rasmus Anderson. Olsen in lane number four going left to right. There he is in the dark tank top, still leading just barely ahead of Anderson and Gamboa. It continues to be Olsen as they advance to the final two bars. This one, 270 pounds. Olsen opting to go for a split jerk, and that's a little bit slower. It gives the edge to Gamboa in the green tank top in lane number two. And it'll be Gamboa that'll hop up onto the platform about 34 seconds. Olsen less than a second behind. Rasmus Anderson in third. Logan Collins unable to get the lockout at 275. Frederick Agidius has made his way to the final bar with 12 seconds remaining until the time cap. Collins underneath it. And the 170 pounder Logan Collins will get up onto the platform. Just under the time cap, but Gideon's got the rep, but he won't get onto the platform, so he'll technically be time capped. And he will likely see his run in this event end. But Gamboa, 33-92. It's going to be one of the quick times we've seen thus far. Brandon, what a great race. If you're looking at the bottom of the screen, the four boxes, the fourth box from the left, Noah Olsen made quick work for the first couple bars really efficient but he slowed down when he got to the third bar i believe it was right here he opts for now that's a push jerk on his fourth clean and jerk he opts for a split jerk you'll see it here in that fourth box from the left he takes a second to pause that's what gives roy gamboa just a couple second lead to put him in at 34 seconds gamboa making his way just ahead of noah olsen and the man that took last year off to pursue his career as a firefighter, making the most of his return trip to the games as he wins this heat and has one of the faster times we've seen thus far, but still two heats remaining, and it's the top ten in the point standings that are left to take on round number one. This will be athletes six through ten in the standings. James Newberry, tenth place in lane one. Adrian Moonviller in eighth will be in lane two. Brent Bukowski in sixth place in three. Jorgen Carl Goodmanson in seventh place. He'll be in lane four. And Willie George in ninth place in the standings will be in lane five. And Brent Fikowski with the lightest clean and jerk of these five men at 325 pounds. But these barbells should not be a problem. He's a technician. I don't expect any mistakes. And this could be a damage control event for Fikowski, as you pointed out, with the weight of the bar. But a couple of athletes trying to make their way up include James Newbury, who's made him his first appearance in the top ten since after event one. Stand by. And away we go. It's Newbury in the pink tank top in lane one. On the bottom side of the screen in lane five, Willie George in the blue shirt. Fikowski leading the way step for step with Willie George. So Fikowski in the center lane, number three, will continue to lead the way. Willie George still in line with them, actually. As they get to the 270-pound bar, Willie George will take the lead. The first Frenchman to qualify for the games may be taking the heat. And he will as he gets onto the platform at 32 seconds. 
32-86 for George, 34-04 for Fikowski, Goodmanson in at 38-23, here's James Newberry getting the block down and he brings the feet together, he'll get the okay, and he'll come up onto the platform in the fifth position as Moonbiller was in at 42-75, Newberry 49-38, and George and Fikowski likely seeing themselves advance in the top 20. Well, George and Fikowski, they were rep for rep, almost second for second, all the way through from start to finish. And you can see Willie George there throwing that barbell over his head, making quick work. Number Barbell number five looked just like barbell number one. Dip, drive, catch, and throw it overhead. And he comes in at 32 seconds for the heat win. Not far off the top time, which continues to be held by Tim Paulson all the way back in heat number two at 31.88. But for Willie George... Looks like he will be on his way to the semifinals. So it's still one heat left in the quarters, and it's the top five in the point standings. Lucas Esslinger in fifth place in the standings in lane one. Fourth place is Patrick Vellner in lane number five. Cole Sager, third place in the standings, lane two. Lucas Hogberg in second place in lane four. And the points leader and reigning two-time champ, Matt Fraser, in lane three. But for Fraser and Vellner, this has been a pretty chaotic day already as they each had horrible falls on the cargo net in the battleground presented by the U.S. the United States Marine Corps. And you can see and Felder here getting some medical attention. They were really concerned trying to make sure that he's fit to compete. Now they did do a check here that the great medical staff that we had they looked him over they wanted to send him offside to get a little extra imaging done make sure he's okay and he did check out he has been cleared to continue and Patrick Vellner has made his way back to the arena to complete this event. So obviously okay enough to compete in this event the question is is he 100% how will he handle this one. I think we'll know it on the first couple barbells here, Brandon. continues to be the top time but all that matters is get into the top 20 it's Matt Fraser in the white leaders jersey out in front just ahead of Lucas Hochberg in second he's in lane number four Fraser no surprise here already through bar number three out in front by about a half second over Hochberg it's Vellner in third Esslinger in fourth but Matt Fraser might be taking the top time here in the quarterfinal round why not Matt Fraser fastest time in round one 30.03 for Fraser. Hoberg also in under the prior fastest time at 31.02. Vellner 35.37. Esslinger 39.04. And Cole Sager still doing work on the 270 bar. And this could be a huge points hit for the man that entered this event in third. left to describe this. What else do you say, Brandon? He just ripped through those bars in 30 seconds. So strong, so fast. Not a mistake, not a single movement out of order. It was just perfect. The race between him and Hopeberg, they were rep for rep. Matt had a little bit of a lead going from second to third barbell and kept that lead all the way through the finish here. You can see them in the middle box and the, the fourth box from the left. Fraser helped Hoper going back and forth, but Fraser was able to keep that tempo and that momentum all the way, all through five barbells. You can see his fifth lift right there, and he finishes in a time just over 30 seconds. And the big thing here, fastest time will go last in the semifinals, so it'll be some added rest for Fraser and Hogberg as they have the two top times here in the quarterfinal round as we await the results for the top 20 as it is Matt Fraser, Lucas Hoberg, and Tim Paulson the top three times. You see the names Ben Smith, Brent Fikowski, points contenders in sixth and ninth as they are part of the top 10. We will have 10 other athletes that will advance and they are here with Noah Olsen included, Patrick Bellner. Well, he's back, 15th place. He ties with Cody Anderson, Alex Smith, Alex Anderson, also in Rasmus Anderson, the 20th and final that will move on to the round of 20. 
I thought it was great to watch these guys move across the floor. They're so efficient, especially at these, we're, we're going to call them light barbells. It was relatively easy for them to get across the floor, and our leaders, the ones that we expected, did really, really well. All of them capable of throwing well over 275 pounds overhead, and it's going to be fun to watch them in the next round in the one beyond. And how about the turnaround for Patrick Bellner? We, we weren't even sure if he was going to be able to complete, compete when he was taken offside for a, a little extra checkup. Uh, it was deemed clear to compete, and there he is in the 15th place, and he'll be moving on to the semifinals. If you look at the scores, too, 35.37. We've got a tie for 15th place. So your top 20 will have a few minutes to get ready while the fantastic volunteer staff here at the games will transfer the floor over. The weights will be bumped up. Only 20 will advance to our semifinals, which will be coming up in just a few moments.